Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for returning promptly from your coffee, kindly sponsored by ASNE, uh, one of the exhibitors out the back here, um, who we rely on to make these events happen the way that they do. Um, I hope you all had the opportunity to visit the, the exhibition stands, and I encourage you to do so over the breaks because part of that networking and understanding what technology is out there is uh, a critical component of, of this event. It's um, now my pleasure to change hats um, from, from being the, the chair of the, the forum and to introduce our uh, first highly distinguished panel um, for the scene setting first round table for this year's TNI forum. The executive level round table is designed to address key issues on the forum's agenda in our interactive and informal setting. The aim is for each of the panellists to address the topic of how their organisations see the future of borders from the perspective of efficiency, transparency, security and resilience, and what are the major challenges their industry or organisation will face in the next 10 years. Following each of the panellists' introductory remarks, that they will be asked to discuss amongst themselves the key themes that will emerge, and this will be followed by an interactive dialogue with the audience. So if you have good questions, please hold them towards the end and you will have the opportunity to ask questions of our panel uh, in due course. Our first speaker is the Secretary General of the World Customs Organisation, Kunio Makaria, who spoke earlier. Cuneo was elected as the Secretary General of the WCO in January 2009 and has just been re-elected for another term starting in January 2014. Prior to taking up this appointment, he spent seven years as the organisation's Deputy Secretary General. Prior to joining the WCO, Cuneo worked for the Japanese Ministry of Finance for 25 years in a variety of senior posts which gave him a broad experience in customs, trade development, budget and financial policies. In addition, he participated in the GATT Uruguay round of trade negotiations and that experience enabled him to acquire an excellent knowledge of trade-related matters. He holds a BA degree in law from the University of Tokyo and a PhD in international relations from the University of Kent. Cuneo, the floor is yours. Do you? Oh yes, yes, now I can hear my voice. Um, well, uh, during the, the coffee break, I went to the stands and I saw many people are very much um, enthusiastic about the technology. Well, um, originally what we thought uh, was that uh, now all administrations are under austerity because, uh, that because of the economic situation. So uh, many governments want, to, uh, want the customer administration to work uh, with limited resources. Uh, a kind of doing more with, with less resources. And uh, this is why uh, we thought about technology. But uh, um, when I see today's uh, situation, and it's more than that, They're just uh, not replacing uh, um, the reduced resources, but uh, also uh, it's the well, private sector going using more technology and innovation. So we customers should follow that. And that is what uh, I'm observing. For example, many governments are now uh, trying to uh, really promote trade and as, a source, as a source of economic development, and they are very keen to enhance uh, climate for, for investment by ensuring efficient border procedures. And um, therefore, for example, in the um, maritime port area, they try to shorten the period of clearance Clearance is not only limited to customs area, but uh, in all clearance of goods, and uh, therefore quite often we are invited to um, measure the time necessary for the clearance of goods. And uh, through this timely study, they try to um, identify the bottlenecks for each step. What is the problem? And uh, uh, they try to see how technology can move in to shorten the time necessary for clearance. And uh, um, it's not only for customs. Other government agencies are quite often responsible for delay in clearance. And also, even service providers have some problems. And uh, um, actually, that technological infrastructure is quite often lacking uh, in, in the, as the outcome of the study. So governments are very keen to um, address this issue of uh, bottlenecks uh, at uh, um, smooth movement of goods. But uh, um, nowadays, it is not only national level. 
because many countries are in the regional uh, integration procedure. And for the regional integration, quite often it involves from the port, um, the first port towards the, well, inland country and landlocked countries. Therefore, transit uh, has gained importance. Uh, well, this morning we heard uh, several um, uh, speeches uh, concerning uh, transit, how they can try to use uh, technology to uh, streamline the transit procedures. Because uh, for the landlocked countries, it is really, uh, transit is the lifeline for, for their economy. And uh, this is why I see uh, the emerging technologies uh, uh, being used, applied for technology, and quite often they are um, uh, often um, evolutionary stage. So uh, this is where I would like to see how it involves. But uh, and speaking of um, that transit, uh, quite often it is at the land borders. But um, at the land borders, uh, again, uh, this is another problem of security occurs. Uh, if you see what happens in the world, um, for example, in Africa or um, uh, Middle East, quite often that uh, um, uh, stability at borders is very important because uh, quite often uh, terrorists use uh, the breach of, uh, of borders as their activities and often illicit trade, such as cigarette, drugs, fake medicines, are often used for, for those organized crime, but also those who are opposed to the, the current governments. So from that point of view, that security, um, how to ensure that crossing borders, uh, they are safe and security-wise good, acceptable, uh, that they don't destabilize those countries, has become also very important. So how we can ensure the balance between, well, on one hand, facilitating trade, trade, but at the same time, ensure that security and safety of citizens are there is always a challenge for, for customer administrations. And um, I could see that it is not only customs problems, because at borders it is not only customs. There are, of course, private sector, but also other government agencies. Uh, therefore, that kind of coordination, collaboration has become very important. For example, in the air cargo area, um, there have been a problem of uh, security that, was, uh, that happened in 2010. And since then, WCO has worked very closely with the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, or uh, UPU, uh, Universal Postal Union, uh, because uh, um, like uh, other express industry, uh, postal service or express industry, they use uh, air cargo. And uh, for the air cargo, it is very important to ensure security and safety. But in, um, with the use, increased use of internet, it, is, uh, it has become very important uh, that, uh, common, that uh, consumers have direct access. So there is a huge increase of number in air cargo and small consignment. And this is another of the headaches head for many customer administrations, how to ensure at the airports or postal offices, try to ensure that those small consignments coming from air cargo are safe and admissible for, for the free circulation in their country. So uh, this kind of uh, air cargo security and uh, um, uh, collaboration with uh, um, aviation authorities has become very important. And uh, actually, we have produced a common brochure to describe what we should do at the airports involving not only customs, but uh, um, aviation authorities, airport authorities, and um, traders. Um, uh, those who use cargo. So uh, this is one model uh, that uh, we have to work increasingly in a coordinated border management uh, um, environment. And uh, with that in mind, now uh, with the ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization, and IMO, International Maritime Organization, and WCO, we have 
um, established uh, three secretaries general annual meeting so that uh, we can facilitate trade but at the same time um, ensure the security and, and the safety of the total supply chain. So this is what I observe uh, at borders and of course uh, earlier last week we saw the devastating typhoons in the Philippines and the first thing what customers should do is to ensure that relief goods going um, smoothly to their countries and uh, we have uh, worked with Red Cross and UN um, uh, Orchard this is about a relief goods um, um, organization and uh, we have already established a single point in the Philippines so that uh, the relief goods come smoothly. So this kind of um, resistance, resistance of uh, supply chain in case of natural disaster or other incidents that has become also important. So this is uh, really where we would like to see more collaboration with the private sector involved in supply chain and other government agencies with the use of innovation and technology. Thank you. Thank you. It's now, it's now my pleasure to call on our second speaker, Maria Siamara Ayarin, who started her career in customs more than a decade ago. She has been the Customs Director General at the Federal Administration of Public Revenues of Argentina, EFIP, since 2010. Prior to taking this position, Siamara held a number of senior positions in AFIC Customs, including the position of Social Security Director, General Deputy Director of Human Resources, Deputy Director General of Customs and Metropolitan Transaction. Siamara graduated from Nordesta National University with a diploma in foreign trade. She is also our host, and I hand her the floor. Thank you very much. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Eh, buen, buenos días a todos. Luego de, de la intervención del Secretario General respecto al tema que nos propone el debate, ¿no? Yo quisiera iniciar mis eh, opiniones al respecto, primero partiendo de algo que el Secretario General abordó, ¿no? con claros ejemplos y que yo lo resumiría, eh, en una realidad que tenemos las aduanas, eh, no solamente de mi país, sino de todas las aduanas de, de los distintos países que tienen que ver justamente con la diversidad. Enfrentamos distintas aduanas, esa diversidad dada por una cuestión geográfica donde están ubicadas y más aún por el flujo de bienes, de servicios, de personas que tienen que transitar por las mismas. Y frente a esa diversidad, una cuestión que nos une como administraciones aduaneras y que tiene que ver con el desafío que tenemos, porque lo requieren nuestros gobiernos, nuestras sociedades, en ser eficientes. Y en ser eficientes, fundamentalmente, en términos de control, en términos de seguridad y en términos de agilidad. Dicho esto, y desde el punto de vista de Argentina, de cara a cómo nos vemos en los años venideros, tenemos que introducir otro análisis, también otro elemento, que tiene que ver que nuestro país se encuentra inserto en un proceso de integración, lo han comentado tanto el Administrador Federal en su presentación, el señor Secretario General también. Este proceso de integración cobra relevancia, dependerá de su evolución, cómo son nuestras fronteras a futuro. Y ahí es importante todo el apoyo y el lineamiento que la Organización Mundial de Aduana viene dando a las administraciones insertas en estos procesos de cara al paquete de integración regional. Así que dicho esto, yo creo que de cara al desafío que tenemos, una respuesta por parte de nuestra organización viene de la mano necesariamente de cómo profundizamos un proceso de modernización que hemos iniciado, que lo hemos iniciado tempranamente en el año 2004 y que hay dos pilares en los cuales hemos construido ese proceso de modernización. Por un lado, obviamente, todos los lineamientos 
que nos da el convenio de Kioto revisado, que es oportuno compartir con ustedes, está en las últimas instancias de aprobación de nuestro poder legislativo. Y por otro lado, del cual hemos sido más parte, por parte de la aduana argentina, en el marco para facilitar y asegurar de la Organización Mundial de Aduana. Esos instrumentos nos han permitido a la administración aduanera estructurar su plan de modernización y que tiene tres ejes fundamentales. Uno, mucho que ver con este evento, ¿no? que ha sido la decisión de la inversión en tecnología. Y en dos aspectos, por un lado. Tecnología aplicada a los procesos, tecnología aplicada a los sistemas, a la manera que nos comunicamos con los distintos operadores del comercio exterior y que ha marcado el rumbo al administrador federal en el sentido de los desafíos que nos presentamos ya en forma inmediata en el 2014. Por otro lado, también la decisión estratégica de la organización de haber incorporado lo que han sido las herramientas desarrolladas por el sector privado para llevar a cabo la inspección no intrusiva de las cargas. Esa es una decisión estratégica y en la que ha quedado claro que seguimos profundizando desde la aduana argentina. Otro de los pilares en los que construimos el proceso de modernización lo entendemos desde una intensificación de lo que es el intercambio de información. Y acá un intercambio de información en dos aspectos. Primero, de la mano del proceso de integración que somos parte. Lo decía el vicepresidente hoy en representación de toda la región, cómo tenemos plataformas informáticas ya desarrolladas en algunos distintos estadios, pero que sin lugar a duda nos permiten y la sustentabilidad nos permitirá futuro poder hacerlas operativas en forma total. Por otro lado, una decisión que ha tenido la aduana argentina en ese sentido y que ha sido a partir de estos desarrollos informáticos exportarlos a otros países no miembros del proceso de integración de manera de construir una red de intercambio de información regional. Y otro aspecto en el intercambio de la información que entendemos que a futuro debe ser sistémica, debe ser anticipada para que sea eficaz, ha sido la decisión estratégica de avanzar en forma bilateral con aquellos países que no tenemos un proceso de integración en danza, pero sí la decisión estratégica de vincularnos en forma comercial o de abrir mercados y donde conocer y tener intercambio de información genera una plataforma transparente para nuestro comercio lícito. Por otra parte, decía yo, otro de los pilares en el que se sustenta y se acompaña todo este proceso es, sin lugar a duda, cómo fortalecemos nuestros recursos. En alguna parte de las exposiciones hemos destacado el desafío que tenemos las administraciones aduaneras con recursos constantes, diría muchas veces, inelástico frente al gran crecimiento de la actividad económica bienvenida y del comercio exterior a responder a estas premisas de ser eficientes, de ser ágiles y viene de la mano de poder incorporar el desafío de la modernización en nuestros recursos de manera que entiendan el cambio, que lo puedan llevar a cabo y que lo transmitan. Y en este punto la tecnología nos vuelve a ayudar, porque sin lugar a duda el desarrollo de plataformas como por ejemplo el e-learning van a ser vitales. Así que digo, si somos exitosos eh, en esta hoja de ruta que nos planteamos, que la hemos iniciado, pero que sin lugar a duda tenemos mucho por hacer, seguramente podremos encontrarnos en eso que el Secretario General ha denominado muchas veces, la posibilidad que tenemos las aduanas en términos de conectividad, en términos de eficiencia, de asegurar una cadena logística.